Want to create this eye-catching effect? We'll follow along to find out how I did it in After Effects. Okay, I have a clip here of a woman walking down the street texting from her phone. I'm gonna add some graphics to this and I'm gonna start by building them in a separate comp. Before we get any further, I wanna give a big shout out to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Skillshare is the place to be for online learning. I've been diving into some incredible classes lately. One of the keys to teaching is investing time in learning and fine tuning new skills. So I've been diving deeper into the world of graphic design like typography, color theory, and some techniques in Photoshop and Illustrator. So on Skillshare, I've been glued to this graphic design masterclass by Lindsay Marsh. It goes super in depth. It's really helping me fine tune my graphic design skills. Skillshare is the ultimate learning community for creatives just like us, offering tons of classes across various topics, whether it's video, graphic design, business, creative hobbies, Skillshare has you covered. Now here's the exciting part. Skillshare is offering a one month free trial to the first 500 people who click on my link in the description. So don't miss out, click on that link in the description and let's make this summer one of growth and creativity with Skillshare. So thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Let's get back to After Effects. So in a new comp, I'm gonna to go to new solid and I'm just gonna create a white background. I'm gonna remove this later and I'm gonna create a square shape layer. This will be my text message box. So under my shape layer settings, I could select round corners. And then once that's selected, I'll go to the round corners dropdown and I could just increase it to my liking. Now I'm gonna create a circle shape layer right next to my other shape layer. This is gonna be my character avatar, okay? Once I have that, I'm gonna select the text tool and I'm just gonna write my first text message out. I'll format this a little bit. And now my project panel, I'm gonna drag my subject's avatar photo into my comp and I'm gonna resize this to make it the shape of my circle. So now in my timeline, I'm gonna use the track mat pick whip of my image and drag it onto my shape layer. Okay, that looks good. So now I'm just gonna pre-comp the shape layer and my image layer together. And now that it's pre-comp, I'm gonna make sure that my anchor point is right in the center of my circle. You'll see why later. Now I'm gonna create a quick animation. I'll start with the position and scale, but I'll probably end up just using the scale. Okay, I'm gonna start at a scale at zero, make it go over 100% a few frames later, and then bring it back to 100%. Adding motion blur and easy ease. And we have a nice overshoot effect. And for my shape layer, I'm just gonna have it fade in using the opacity keyframes, starting at zero and going to 100. So for my text layer, I'm gonna use one of the built-in presets for text. I'll use fade up lines. I'll just drag this onto my text layer. And here's my final animation after a few tweaks. And I'll use this as a template and create my alternate character's text. Now with my main video in a separate comp, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on my file and I'm gonna go to track and stabilize and track camera. And I'm gonna let this analyze for a bit. And when that's completed, I'm gonna see a bunch of points throughout my scene and I'll use these to create the points where my animations are coming in. So selecting my first set of points right here, I'll click create solid and camera. Now I'll take that solid and I'll reposition it to where I want my text message to pop up in the scene. And from there, I'll select my first text message comp, holding the option key, and with my solid selected in my timeline, I'll drag the composition to replace that solid. And when I let go, you could see the comp takes its place. So from here, I'm just gonna enable time remapping so I can control the timing. And as you can see, it kind of pops right in front of her. It looks great. Now I'm gonna make a few tweaks to the positioning, but this is something I'm probably gonna keep changing. So now going back to my video layer, I'll click on my 3D camera tracker effect, and I click on that and my points come back up. I'll select another spot for my alternate text message to come in. So I think on the other side would be good, so I'll click Create Solid, and I'll readjust the positioning of that solid like I did before. And doing the same thing in my project panel, I'll select my comp, I'll just hold option and drag this onto my solid and it'll replace the solid comp. I'll make a few quick adjustments. Okay, so now the fun part. Now we have to use the rotor brush to rotoscope our subject to get these messages to go behind her. So I'll click on the source video 
and clicking Option W or selecting the rotor brush tool, I'm gonna select the outline of my subject with the green brush here. You can see the pink outline shows my roto progress. And I'll hit Command and up or down to change my brush size. I'll make it larger. And I'll roto the rest of my subject. Holding Option while using the brush will remove parts you don't want. You can see it turns red. Okay, selecting my alpha overlay down here, I could see my progress so far. Okay, looking good. I just need to fine tune her hair. As an alternate to the rotor brush, selecting Option W switches it to the Refine Edge tool, which is perfect for hair. You can see the brush is purple. I'm gonna color in all over the edges of her hair that are semi-transparent. Switching to my alpha boundary overlay, I can see what this is actually doing. I see as my subject moves, I have to tweak it a little bit more, but with a little bit of fine tuning, it comes together really nicely. So we could spend weeks and weeks on this fine tuning and fine tuning, but for the purposes of this video and this tutorial, we just kind of need a clean outline of our subject. So let's go with it. So once I'm happy with my roto, I'm gonna export a pre-render with alpha channel so my computer doesn't catch on fire. Making sure I choose lossless with alpha. Once that's done in the main comp, I'll delete my roto layer or I can hide it. I'll drag in my alpha pre-render and my comp will play much smoother. So now it's really starting to come together. On each of my layers, I'll keyframe a camera lens blur along with opacity changes. And here's our final result. 